Welcome back to the K-High Afternoon News. Good afternoon. I am Casey Freela. Pleased to be joined by Congressman Tom McClintock here on K-High Radio for our weekly conversation. And Tom, you join us from Lake Tahoe. I want to start by just kind of talking about uh, the event that you're involved with up there, and then maybe we can branch out a little bit more into the concerns right now of, of the area, especially considering how many wildfire stories I've done, and we're just kind of easing into the season. Well, that's exactly what we're discussing here in uh, Tahoe. Uh, this is the Western Caucus. It's a uh, uh, caucus of about 75 members of the House of Representatives in the U.S. Senate uh, who are concerned about uh, forest management, uh, federal land use policies, and most importantly, the public's uh, uh, right to, to, to uh, use, resort, and recreation of the public lands. And uh, we had uh, great meetings yesterday with the uh, uh, U.S. Forest Service, uh, uh, looking at uh, what we've been able to achieve in the Tahoe Basin with the uh, legislative authority that I was able to get uh, uh, in uh, 2016 to expedite uh, uh, timber uh, uh, thinning uh, for fire prevention. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, Jeff Marshallet, who's the uh, superintendent of the uh, Tahoe Basin Management Unit, uh, tells me that it has taken their Invi- the time that's required to do an environmental study before you can thin out a forest and before you can cut down a single tree, it's a four-and-a-half-year average process to go through the environmental reviews. Oh my. Uh, our, legis- our legislation has taken that down to less than four months. The report that's normally uh, uh, developed to, to cut a tree down is about uh, – uh, uh, well, it, it, it can run uh, uh, up to 800 pages, more than 800 pages of analysis. Of uh, our legislation is taking the final report on the project we toured was 16 pages, uh, which means that they can uh, uh, start clearing out the excess timber. We were at uh, one of their uh, prescribed harvest sites. Of, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, near the uh, where the Angora fire uh, uh, burned 3,000 uh, acres and destroyed. I think it was about uh, well, it was hundreds and hundreds of homes. Of, uh, uh, so we're actually making progress here. The problem is we could only because of environmental leftist opposition in the Senate, we could only get um, uh, 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 the the authority for the Tahoe Basin. But it's been so successful, uh, I think we now have a very strong case to make to uh, to apply it throughout uh, uh, the U.S. Forest Service lands. And it's so it, it's it's kind of like we've talked about in the past. You, you make progress. I mean, what you just described so accurately depicts what anybody who visits that area or lives in that area wants. Look, we have to reduce the timeline so that we can remain safe. There is, I mean, there is so much unburned areas out there. Even the city of Lake Tahoe came up with a new emergency plan for people that are are visiting that area, yet you still run into opposition from the other side. It's almost like either they've never been there and don't understand the geography of our state, or or they quite frankly just don't care, and, and their environmentalism uh, rules over sanity. Yeah, I, no, I, I think they don't care. I think that they, they, they are such ideological zealots that uh, uh, they, their, their entire uh, approach is uh, uh, hands off the force, leave them alone. Well, we all know from our own experience that an untended garden uh, will grow and grow and grow until it chokes itself to death, and then it will, if it's a forest, it's ultimately uh, consumed by catastrophic wildfire. That's what's going on. Uh, uh, in California, but before we began managing our forests, we lost between 4.5 and, and 11 million acres a year to catastrophic wildfire. We established the U.S. Forest Service to manage our lands so that they would be fire-resistant and, and fire-resilient. Uh, and that's exactly what we did throughout the last half of the 20th century. Instead of losing between 4.5 and, and 11 million acres, we lost a very steady quarter million. Uh, that's a dramatic drop because of, of what the Forest Service was able to do to actively manage our timber. Uh, excess timber comes out of a forest in one of two ways. It's either carried out or it burns out. We decided to carry it out to preserve our forest for every generation. But when we passed these environmental laws in the 1970s, uh, it's made the uh, active management of the forests uh, all but impossible. Uh, You know, those four and a half years it takes to do an environmental impact statement before you can cut down a tree, uh, that's also consuming millions of dollars. And that's the rub. Uh, 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 The 
at, when we were actively managing our force, our force were actually generating money for U.S. taxpayers. Right. 25% because we would auction off the excess timber. 25% of that went to directly to local governments. The other 75% went to fund the Forest Service uh, and to actively manage the public lands. Um, those environmental laws have imposed such restrictions and such enormous costs on that process. Not only does not very little of it get done, but it actually costs us a lot of money. And, uh, and, and people have got to understand that. I think the Paradise Fire was a real wake-up call for a lot of folks. Definitely. I think they're realizing we've got to get back to the policies at work. Remember, I said we'd taken our, uh, um, our catastrophic fire losses in California from up to 11 million acres down to a quarter million when we actively managed. We're back up. To, we lost last year. We lost 1.3 million acres uh, to catastrophic fire. So we're going back to allowing nature to manage the forest. And what we have discovered is nature, well, Hobbes was right. In a state of nature, life is nasty, brutish, and short. And in the, in the forest, it only ends with catastrophic wildfire, the destruction of the forest. And we were at the Angora site. The Angora fire was in 2007. That was 12 years ago. Timber hasn't grown back. Uh, it's all brush land now. Uh, uh, it'll be a century before that, uh, before that uh, uh, forest is reclaimed. We're visiting with Congressman Tom McClintock here on KI. Just one last question about just kind of fire resource management here in your home state of California. Uh, We've recently done a news story on Governor Gavin Newsom hiring 393 fires for wildfire season. I think that's great. I want people to get jobs, and I feel safer when there's more firefighters. But getting back to the overall issue, what you're talking about is a delay in time and maybe the allocation of resources towards things that could be done better I, I'm just not sure it's going to have an effect. I mean, it, it's 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 good and it's bad at the same time, if that makes sense, in my opinion. Well, yeah, well, uh, Lawrence Crabtree, who's the uh, uh, wonderful supervisor of, of the El Dorado National Forest, told me, look, you know, the, the King Fire a few years back cost $130 million. Uh, you know, imagine what we could do with that if it was put into active forest management. And if we actually changed our laws so that uh, active management, again, generated money, Well, we could manage the entire forest system and instead of costing taxpayers money, generate revenues, not only not only through those direct auctions, but through all of the spinoff commerce uh, that that activity once generated. We used to have 169 uh, sawmills uh, uh, throughout the state of California uh, uh, 30 years ago. I think we're down to fewer than 30 sawmills left. Uh, now, that's all commercial activity that, that uh, uh, made jobs for people, everybody from the sandwich shop uh, to the, uh, uh, to the, to the uh, uh, gas station, to the truck drivers, to the workers at the mills, and those are good jobs, too. All of those gone now because of the environmental left. They promised that in exchange we'd have healthier forests. Exactly the opposite has been true. Not only have they failed to give us healthier forests, they've done irreparable harm to the forests and decimated our mountain uh, uh, county communities and uh, uh, cost American taxpayers enormous revenues that we once enjoyed. Let me conclude on this, Tom. I've been doing a lot of stories on, obviously I report on the market daily on this news show. Uh, Today the 10-year yield is at 1.53%, and people are talking about, you know, fears of a recession. In in my opinion, I think it's it's a little early for people to automatically hit the panic button. We've seen Wall Street kind of have a few different major swings, both up and down. And overall, it it feels like the state of the economy is good. I guess the question that I'm getting from listeners and just talking to people here in the Auburn area is, you know, should investors be worried at this point or could could it just I I just don't feel like a recession is is completely looming and there are things that can be done to prevent it. Exactly right. I mean, certainly a recession is not inevitable. Uh, It depends on policy. And this president has been remarkably successful in, uh, in enacting policies, the biggest regulatory rollback in the history of our country, of uh, uh, one of the biggest tax cuts in American history. Uh, uh, by the way, and that tax cut uh, was such an economic stimulant, the economy expanded so fast, uh, it actually generated more revenues after the tax cut. So we didn't lose revenues when we cut mm. taxes. We actually gained them because of the economic expansion that that triggered. But having had all of that success, and now we're seeing econo- economic growth under uh, uh, Trump's uh, average 2.8% annual. It was 1.7 under Obama. It's 1.5 in the European Union. 
So it's something about uh, those policies that is working. But the two threats to them, and this is where it could be very ironic, are, are, is, is the trade war and, and tariffs uh, and, uh, and the federal deficit, which continues to grow despite the fact we're bringing in record revenues because our spending has grown much faster than our revenue growth. Those two things are direct threats to the economy. Uh, uh, and it would break my heart to see all of the progress that Donald Trump has made with his economic policies that have produced this period of remarkable economic expansion to then uh, throttle that expansion uh, with counterproductive policies like tariffs and trade wars and deficit spending. We've been visiting with Congressman Tom McClintock here on KHI Radio. Tom, as always, thanks so much for your time, and we'll look forward to visiting again soon. Same here. Thanks again, Casey. Take care. We'll be in touch. We'll take a quick break and be right back here on KHI.